Hey, podcasters, what's going on, everybody? Um, on today's episode, we have Tariq Trotter. Uh, Tariq is a, is a buddy of mine. He's a musician, author, and just a really cool human being. And I, I say this with whole heart, everything in my soul. This was the most influential podcast I've done to date. And I don't know if it's because I'm just learning to be quiet during these or I'm getting just these really cool people involved in my life. But seriously, this one was our longest. But this one is going to help you, especially with COVID-19, get through this thing. And I mean this with every intent. This is why I do podcasts for the interview I just had with Tariq. This is why I got into it. This is why I chose this lifestyle. And I cannot wait for people to hear this. But before we get to Tariq... We've got uh, some sponsors that I got to thank. So our first sponsor is a good buddy of mine, and, and I'm ecstatic about this. And he's doing really well for himself, and it's exciting that he, he wanted to come on board and, and sponsor the, the podcast Swim Lessons. And his name is Phil Wright. And Phil Wright is with Guild Mortgage. And with rates being as low as they are now, it's a great time to start investing in your future, either with a new home or lowering the monthly payment you currently have. Reach out to him and his team anytime you can. Find their information online simply by Googling Phil, P-H-I-L, Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, Guild Mortgage, and Guild is spelled G-U-I-L-D, and Phil will help you out. And even if you have questions, just reach out to Phil on his Instagram, whatever the case is, and I mean, he's the nicest guy ever, so... He'll help you out. And our second sponsor is Novato. Novato Inc. N-O-V-A-T-T-O is how you spell that. Um, the sink company, they do a lot of great things, especially when it comes to bathroom accessories. And, I mean, in a time like this with COVID, you need to wash your hands. You need to get things rolling with the with the sanitation department, especially with COVID. So help out. Check out Novato online on Instagram, Facebook, and um Get it going for our two sponsors. And if you want to join out and sponsor a podcast, hit up Swim Lessons, the podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Dallas Hansen, or just hit me up in the DMs. We'll make it work. But uh, here we go. Tariq Trotter. Here come the bowers. Y'all ready to go swimming, baby? Come on. Give it up. Get out of that water. Try to tell y'all, it's swim lessons, baby. <laughs> Dude, Tariq, thank you so much for coming into this today. I know we've been talking about it for a while, but uh, appreciate you coming in. Dude, uh, thank you. So, thank you. Last last time we talked, your life has changed dramatically. You've went from kind of producing a little bit of, or not producing, but you know, putting your own stuff out there, mm-hmm. you know, rapping. You did a book. And then I'm on Instagram, and I, for some reason, comes up in my feed, one of your songs for the background of an L.A. Sparks Instagram. What was that? Can you kind of explain what that <laughs> was all about, man? Yeah, yeah. So I, I've been working with a really dope distributor uh, called United Masters. Okay. So distributor just means when I upload my music to this service, they distribute it to all the major streaming platforms. Um, one of the perks of this particular distributor is that they have relationships with uh, companies such as the NBA. Right. So because of that partnership and that relationship that they have with them, one of the things that they offer to artists like me who use this distribution service is uh, what's called a sync deal. So uh, pretty much when you upload your song with this, with this distributor, you can submit it for uh, consideration by the NBA. My song happened to get selected and that was one of two songs that have now been selected by the NBA so far. Damn, that's why I had to be a good feeling. Yeah, it was. It, <laughs> it's, uh, it was kind of random. Like the, the distributor is very new to the distribution world. Okay. Um, so their support isn't like top notch yet. Right. So I, I knew that the song had gotten... Um, I knew I submitted it, but I didn't know yeah. that it was selected. Like I actually <laughs> never got notification that I was selected. Just one day, the LA Sparks tagged me what? in um, a, a, you know, a promo video that they did for two players that they just drafted from uh, Stanford. And yeah, my song's in it. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I, guess I got selected. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. And the reason you and I kind of clicked at that one party is, is we were... Was it here when we first? You met? remember that? Yeah, oh yeah, I remember that. What do you mean I remember that? I had a few Chardonnay that okay, day. Okay, honestly, so when you when you were telling me everything, um, 
at first I was like, there's no way he's going to remember this. You know, and this was like, this was months before the, you know, your, your podcast swimming lessons was a, was a thing. Right. And so I was just like, yeah, he's not going to remember this. <laughs> but then, you know, you kept going and yeah. you were like looking me dead in my eyes and I was like, okay, he's, he's kind of serious. <laughs> yeah, bro. Well, I mean, you, that's why I liked you is because. You know, we were partying and stuff, but but I, we were talking about serious shit. Like, we were talking about anxiety. We were talking about stress. And, I mean, it's an overlooked thing. And, I mean, sometimes I think especially in a world like we live in today, you know, even pre-COVID, it was like if you had anxiety or stress, you kind of looked at you were weak. Absolutely. You know, you were kind of like, oh, he's like that. And I remember I first... I didn't look at it that way, and I, you know, we both went through our stuff. But Kevin Love from the Cleveland Cavaliers came out, and he had that big story on... Um, on the players union mm-hmm. about how he was struggling through everything and how he had a panic attack during the game. And that was kind of the first time I was like, Oh wow, this happens to other people too. Yeah. Did you have a similar moment where you're like, oh, okay, this is like, everybody does go through something. No, I wouldn't say I had a moment. I think, um, I'm, I'm a really compassionate person. Mm-hmm. So I, I, what I want to say is that for a while now, I've just been aware that it's something that a lot of people go through. Right. I think to an extent, almost everyone goes, you know, goes through it. Yeah, I agree with that. But you, you went through it so much and you learned so much about it that you wrote a book. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that, man. Because I mean, I saw that on one of your posts. And I'm like, holy shit. Like he actually wrote a book about, you know, overcoming certain obstacles in life. And mm-hmm. what, what, what led all to that, man? Yeah. So the, the book is called You Name It. Hopefully, you know, depending on how everything works out over the next couple of months, um, the book should be out, I want to say, by July 29th. And the okay. reason why I say that is because I conceptualized the idea of writing a book on July 29th of last year. And it would just oh, be wow. sick to have that fully done, yeah, packaged full and circle. out, you know, within a year. Yeah. Um, but i wanted to write the book because i felt like i had a lot to share yeah which i think that we all do and in my humble opinion and this might be a little bit of an extreme view but i think at one at some point in everyone's life they should write a book even if it's not going to reach a million you know viewers or or readers like that's not what it's about uh maybe just as a journal yeah um i mean we talk enough you know (laughs) like we all we all have a story so i I think it should be done but yeah i had a lot to share and it's funny because i remember the first time someone asked me about my book they said what's the topic and i paused and i was like damn and i laughed to myself because the first day that I conceptualized the book, I wrote down the 32 topics that I wanted to cover <laughs> in the book. Yeah. And here this person is asking me, what's the topic? And right. I'm like, um, well, life, you yeah. know? So yeah, I covered a, a bunch of, of different things, but I, I guess in some, it's really about you. Yeah. And so that's why I named it, you name it. Mm-hmm. And it's like kind of it's like that that phrase um, that we use sometimes where it's like uh, someone asks you something like, uh, you know, what have you been doing lately? And you're like, you name it, you know, (laughs) Um, because it's it's a lot. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think life and in all regards, it all comes back to you because we're the ones experiencing it. Yeah, that's a good point, isn't it? I mean, everybody has a, a different journey. Mm-hmm. But if you can somewhat relate to someone else's journey and take something from that, you can apply it to your journey, then you know, maybe it'll make the road not so rocky. Yeah. Is that kind of what you were going after with the, the book title and stuff like that? Just to help people out? Or? Yeah. It, it's like, I think it's important to help to guide people. Right. Rather than tell them what to do, you know, this isn't like an instructional book. There are some practical steps that, you know, one can take from this book and apply to their lives. Yeah. But it's it's more so a guide and it's based on experience. It's based on research. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, what because you don't just one day, in my opinion, wake up one day and you're like, hey, I want to write this book. What was there somebody, you know, in high school or somebody <laughs> no. you just literally or was Dude, it like that somebody is, that is exactly No, that is, that's what happened. I woke up one day. Really? I don't remember where I was. Um, I think I was at work, but I was just like, I'm going to write a book. Yeah. But 
I did know for a while that I would eventually write a book. I just thought it would happen like somewhere in my late 30s, 40s, mm-hmm. you know, somewhere like late in life. It just seems like one of those things where, yeah. you know, you do it on, you know, when you're a little bit older and wiser. Yeah. No, that's a good point. I was, I mean, to write a book, to be honest with you, Tariq, in, in a year is pretty damn good. I mean, it takes a lot of people. And you wrote this in how long? How long do you see it? Because you're just s- now publishing it, right? Yeah, I would say it was about six. I would, total, if, I'm, if, if it comes to just writing, mm-hmm. it, I, it was probably a month of writing. But yeah. um, obviously, we're human. We get busy. We get distracted. Yeah. You know, so it's. It, I would say it was like a six, seven month process. Okay. Yeah. So, I... I kind of I, I wanted to learn this because I, I mean I listen to music I see it around you know we've got you know multiple mutual friends that listen to it at parties and stuff how, how did that part of your life come about how when did you yeah when did you get introduced into like the rap style of, of music and when did that come and you're like hey that's a path that's something mm-hmm. I want to do yeah, so I mean, I got introduced to music, to rap music, uh, at a young age. Just yeah. living in Brooklyn, um, I grew up in East New York, which is just a smidge over from where Biggie and, and Jay Z grew up. So those guys were a huge part of like what my ears heard mm-hmm. growing up. Um, I did not grow up wanting to be a rapper, however. What did you want to be? I wanted to be. <laughs> no, tell I, us. I wanted to be an engineer. Oh, wow. Uh, I wanted to be, I think it started as a mechanical engineer. So I wanted to build roller coasters because I I love them from from a young age. And then it shifted into something uh, of a more like greater purpose. Mm -hmm. So um, engineering, but I wanted to do something massive, like find a way to make vehicles and and cars and automobiles run off of something that the earth was very very abundant and like salt water yeah um and then at one point i wanted to be an engineer and a professional basketball player <laughs> <laughs> so i've been a you know i've been a dreamer my my whole my whole life sounds like you wanted to be the baby of elon musk and lebron yeah, james yeah, you wanted to be, ex- yeah exactly you wanted to be a little bit of both exactly and that's why i'm, I'm really looking forward to the day that i, I have kids because i think that's exactly what they will be um <laughs> but music came randomly it came and on one day And it was a day in my sophomore year at college. Um, It was winter recess, so everyone's home except for the basketball team Mm -hmm. um, and the girls' um, basketball team because those are the only winter sports. And it was a, I think it was a Saturday morning, man, in December of 2009. And I woke up and the first thing that I had learned when I woke up was that I had officially made the the team roster. So I had walked on to the basketball team awesome. uh, successfully. Uh, mind you, this was important because my freshman year, when I got to my college, I wanted to walk on then. Um, but I essentially just wasn't ready. Physically, skill-wise, just was not there. Yeah. Um, and that was a that was a tough lesson in itself. Just you know, walking going into a D two school where I'm the best player where I come from, um, and then I get here and these guys are pretty much D one athletes who didn't feel like sitting on a bench for their first two years. Low man on the totem pole. Yeah. You know, you're a high guy and now yeah. you're a low guy. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I wake up. I found out from my coach that I, I made the team. I made the roster. Lit. Yeah. Uh, the second thing I find out, which was also good news, is that my coach had gotten me a meeting with the president of my college. The reason why this meeting was important is because I financially had run out of money to to pay for college. Which in college is important. Y- yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The, so the school was was thirty five thousand a year at the time. <clears throat> and my logic when I when I first went into college and my logic was very green and naive was I'll just go and I'll get good grades because I know if I really try hard at school I could really do this thing. Yeah. And so I went and I got good grades. That's exactly what I did. I had a three point eight 3.862 GPA. Yeah. And um, sophomore year, my school comes to me and says, you know, you've made the dean list twice in a row. For that, we're going to give you $1,000 per semester. Woo. Woo. There so, you go. So I get, I get $3,000 for the year, but the school costs thirty five. dollars Yeah, just the math doesn't yeah, add up the does, best. Yeah, yeah, obviously doesn't add up. Um, now, I've gotten better at basketball because the freshman year, 
my coach told me if I just, you know, I, I stuck around and pretty much said, like, if I be the team manager for a year, you know, he'd give me a little bit more leeway sophomore year. And so for 365 days straight, I was in the gym working on my game. And I mean, 365 days straight. It wasn't, there yeah. wasn't one day that year that I was not in the gym. Right. So this day that, we, that I'm talking about right now, that I'm just trying to, you know, kind of uh, express why it was so important. Yeah. So he gets me the meeting. My parents don't want don't want to co-sign on any more loans because they just co-signed on a thirty five thousand oh. dollar loan the previous year, and they're like, eh, "No, we don't even have the credit to really do that." Yeah. So <clears throat> I go into this meeting with the president of my my college, and just to give some backstory here, I, I don't know if this is like the safest thing for me to say on oh, air okay. or whatever, but my roommate at the time was at my school on a full scholarship because he was family to the president oh, of my college okay yeah. he's on a full scholarship he blew it long story short i won't go into detail but he had to move to another country because he did something so illegal oh while on God. campus right so he blew Damn. a scholarship he got kicked out of the school he gone um he gone yeah so that had just happened before this meeting so we go into this meeting i'm like hey mrs uh fitzpatrick um you know here's my situation i got a 3.8 gpa i'm a i'm a great student i'm mm -hmm. you know an athlete here mm -hmm. i i care a lot about the future of my education and this is where i want to be yeah and no i do not kid you when i say this meeting lasted 30 seconds and i mean literally what? 30 seconds she said to me i'm sorry but there's nothing we can do for you now I'm sitting here that, you know, the way I want to respond is, are you kidding me? My roommate was here in a full right. scholarship because he's family, but there's nothing you can do for a kid who has a 3.8 GPA yeah. and is like actually trying. Yeah. Like this kid, he, he like failed out of college and like also behavior wise did things that got kicked, you know, that got him kicked out. So that's, that's one thing, right? So the meeting ends. Um, and this is one situation in itself. Cause I pretty much just got told that I won't be able to attend college anymore. Now at the time, this is important because I have dreams of being an engineer, right? Which is why I'm getting good grades. I was in a five year program where mm -hmm. I do three years at this school and just for having a C or above in every class, I would transfer to George Washington university to finish my last two years in engineering. And I'm going to the NBA. Yeah, we're on track. But all baby. this stops in one day. Bang. Damn. Right? I can't go to college anymore. So I leave the meeting. Uh, I'd say within minutes, almost. I'd, within minutes. Yeah, it was minutes. I'm, I, I like just got back to my dorm room and I'm trying to process this. And I get a call from my mom. And she tells me that she came home to a letter on our door the uh, the apartment that we were staying at staying at back home and i'm i'm dorming so i'm you know i'm upstate yeah. at college right now okay um but i know exactly what this letter means because i'd seen this letter many times in my childhood when me and my mom you know we moved around from shelter to shelter got evicted from apartment to apartment so i knew what this letter was you know she had to leave yeah. um so bang that was that was my morning <laughs> <laughs> right we didn't even it's not even like two o'clock yet man yeah. i'm just like extreme high i make the basketball team which is this is huge i got a 3.8 gpa i'm going to george washington i'm going to the nba yeah everything's lit and uh bang everything comes to a stop that one day right i get punched in the face and for some reason i have no clue why uh but i was inspired by a song by drake called fear at the time mm -hmm. And um, I, was in, it, I was really inspired by the beat and like the vibe of the song. And I just wrote out everything that I was going through at the time to that beat in like a song form. Oh. And that was the first time I'd ever picked up a pencil to write, write music. music. So uh, I want to back this story up because that was a great... And sorry, I had to put on these sunglasses. Treek and I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't see, dude. I don't know over the first twenty yeah, minutes. Yeah, I was like staring I was right like, into the sun. Treek, are you there, buddy? <laughs> uh, I had to put on sunglasses, so this is much better now. I can actually talk to you. But that was a great, that was a long story. Yeah. So there's a lot of questions <laughs> I have. No, I love that. That's great. I was just letting you roll. What do you say to your mom? Because you went through that a lot when you said you were growing up, but do you, are you the strong guy there? Because I'm thinking in my head, looking back on you know this book you're, you've written now and you're going to release, that had to, you know, lessons you've learned in situations like that where you get bad news to colossal bad news to, you know, now my life is going to change. Mm -hmm. Now I'm finding a new direction in my life in like, you know, less than 20 hours. Mm-hmm. 
what what do you what goes through your mind, Tariq, when you're you know your mom who you look up to you know has been there? You anxiety. Hold, what do you say? Yeah, anxiety, anxiety goes through my mind. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't remember exactly what I said to my mom, but I'm pretty sure the conversation ended, and I'm just trying to tap into that that call emotionally. But I pre- I'm pretty sure it ended with her ending the call, saying she's got to go figure things out. Mm-hmm. And um, for me. I also had to, you know, kind of pack my things. I don't think I left that day because I wrote that song that night. Um, But the, I forgot the title, but the guy who pretty much runs the dorms at my school, and it's a small school, so it's very, you know, intimate. Everybody knows everybody. How small is small? I think um, like less than 5,000 kids total. Oh shit, that is pretty yeah, small, it's, man. It's small. That's very, like where I a, went to school. It's very similar, yeah. Yeah, it's a private uh, a, a private college. So, um, yeah, he says, you know, I'll give you two weeks most, but then you you know you got to make your way out of the dorms. And did you have a car? No, no car. No. When you grow up in New York, you don't don't have a car. Yeah, you don't need one. Um, yeah, yeah, don't have one. And if you grow up in a part of New York where I'm from, you definitely don't have one. <laughs> you got two feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I that was the first time that I I got punched in the throat by life. Yeah. And I didn't know it, you know, it, it, this isn't the man that you're speaking to now that that knows that 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 punch in the throat was necessary and I'll explain why, you know, probably later on in a conversation I'll probably nat- naturally lead us there, but um I felt overwhelmed mm-hmm. and I felt like I had to somehow get the emotion out and it ended up coming out in song form and you know how i knew like it was just like confirmation that it was very real there were people around me right like typical college kids who were just partying just you know they've got their yeah. parents are paying their way through college yeah. like they they don't relate to what i'm going through at all but for some reason i uploaded the song onto facebook um a video of me just like rapping a song in my dorm okay. on facebook and the comments went crazy nice. from all the people you know at, at my school that you know i dormed with and partied with and whatnot and they were just like yo you need to take this seriously and a couple of months later i ended up saying all right like let me let me try this thing out yeah but to answer your question, it was just what's going through my mind was uh, it was a feeling of just being overwhelmed and lost, mm-hmm. not knowing what tomorrow's going to look like. Right. You know, did you have a feeling that maybe you would have to take the reins? I got to take the reins. This is this is my job now. Something like that. I'll I'll tell you a a, a short story. I won't okay. make it as no, long. No, I like short stories. stories. But um. Good. When I got back home and we were packing our things to to leave the the house that we were being, you know, pretty much forced out of, Mm -hmm. um, I picked up the telephone and I started calling... uh, I I, I picked up... No, this actually wasn't even that same time. It actually happened... um, a couple of months later again so we're we're moving to connecticut that's what we're about to do and i can't believe that this is happening so this is a few months later this is post um yeah so now i'm back home okay not too not too much like a little a few months later okay so we're back home we're about to move to connecticut i can't believe this is happening i pick up the phone and i start calling labels directly like googling rock nation you know googling def jam and calling these places and i'm like I don't even remember what I was asking. I was so distressed that I was doing something very foolish and stupid that just isn't going to work. I was pretty much just like asking these people to like, how do I get a, a record deal? Like, how can I, you know, get my music to their yeah. hands? And you know, <laughs> this is not something that you do. It's not, <laughs> it's not the, like, imagine like calling Apple, <laughs> you know, and being really? like, look, I've got an idea. I need to pitch you guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like it, you, it's just, that's not how the access works. Yeah. Um, but I was so stressed and maybe it was, I was trying to take the reins and like figure out a way to like save what my family was going through at the time by doing something like that. So it was very inefficient, but yeah, I, I think there was like a, a degree of me trying to control what was going on or, or fix it. So what happened? So did you, you made all these phone calls and then did you eventually just figure it out on your own? Yeah, I made those phone calls and and essentially uh, part of my friends, I got shit on, you know, they were like, sorry, no, that's not how this works. (laughs) Right. And um, yeah, we ended up moving to Connecticut. 
like and that was it and when you move to a different state and you don't know anyone and you move to a state like connecticut where there isn't you know like here in scottsdale there's a lot going on yeah right in connecticut it's just houses and trees oh yeah and so there isn't much to do there's not a very easy way to meet people and um i was forced to sit at home on the weekends where I would be otherwise like on weekends either partying in college or hanging out with people in you know in New York I was forced to to sit at home and that was the time where I really started to cultivate my style and my mm-hmm. my voice and you know who I am as a music artist that's that's where it started okay so then you're in you're in Connecticut mm-hmm. where does treat go now like what's the what's the process from there because now you're down here obviously but what happened in between those times yeah so Tariq in Connecticut continues to do uh, the things that Tariq was doing in New York and what I mean is in New York I was working um, two to three jobs at a time to to uh, to help my, my help my parents you know pay pay for rent yeah and so when I moved to Connecticut at one point I was working at Best Buy Kohl's and also I was a dishwasher at a, a restaurant that was nearby my house this was all at all at the same time um, what also happens is I get contacted by someone I went to high school with. His name is Benjamin Klein, and he would later become my manager. Uh, it's funny because in high school I didn't know Ben, yeah. um, but he he knew who I was, and he was like, "I'm tr- you know trying to get into music management." And kudos and shout out to him because I wouldn't be who I am today without him. He also just launched his own uh, record label like a couple of weeks ago. Whoa! Um, but yeah, he, Ben would eventually become my manager and take me way farther than I was probably even ready to go at the time um, because I had talent, although it, it hadn't been harnessed yet. And I also wasn't harnessed and I hadn't mastered myself as a person. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of like a Blake Griffin when he first came into the league. You know, yeah. you can dunk on everybody, but you know once that goes you gotta you gotta you gotta know who you are you gotta right. be a person in this world you gotta contribute you gotta you know it, it gets a little deeper so um yeah in connecticut i started to build my buzz man yeah and and with ben so i was on blogs i would say in like 2014 i was really really popping on the internet um along the likes of certain artists that you might know today like logic mm-hmm. um mike stud um, oh yeah, Mike Studd. Uh, he's got a really good podcast too. Yeah, his yeah, he, Mike Studd is 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 the man. Um, I love his his growth too. He's got that thing at the beginning. Are you ready? <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? He's yeah, awesome. Yeah. And uh, I had met Mike Studd um, through our video director at the time, a guy named John Kilmer, who I used to record with, and so. Um, that you know relationship kind of formed organically and we made a song and a video together and that was really it we're not like you know friends or anything yeah um, but yeah that's that's when you know m- me as an artist I was I was kind of booming I was picking up traction I was getting known my videos were getting hundreds of thousands to millions of views on YouTube and I was doing shows mm-hmm. uh, wasn't exactly touring but I did headline a show which I, I sold out it was about 250 people um, hey 250 is a lot man when you're coming up yeah yeah it was it's 150 or 250 I can't remember the exact but it, yeah when you're coming up it, yeah. it's, you know it's a big deal that's Madison Square Garden baby we're going out tonight <laughs> yeah that's exactly yeah um, I was performing in different states you know Delaware um, man Pennsylvania and yeah, th- you know, things were just were, were just picking up. And then eventually uh, the same thing kind of happened in Connecticut where I don't think we got forced out, but the my parents were still working in New York. Mm-hmm. So they were taking the drive down every single day. And that's a lot. It's like an hour and a half with traffic coming okay. back. It, it turns into like a three, four hour drive. Right. And so they ended up moving back to New York and I was left in Connecticut for about two months uh, during those two months, I slept on the couch at Yardley's house. Okay, um, Yardley, who you know, and Yardley, shout out Yardley Marslin. Shout out Yardley Marslin. <laughs> He's a mutual friend of ours. He's gonna come on pretty soon. Word. I gotta get him on. Biggest, I- biggest heart, biggest heart I know. Oh, probably. Yardley's the shiz. Um, so yeah, I stayed at Yardley's house for about two months um, because I hadn't had jobs lined up in New York yet. I had my jobs in Connecticut. My, you know, my three jobs, and so yeah, I stayed at his house. That's when we got really close and. Um, this is when things start to get blurry and I lose focus of, of, 
a very special opportunity in my life where music wise if i really just locked in um i don't want to i don't want to discredit where logic or mike stud you know are but what i say what i will say is like at the time at house parties in connecticut my music was being played right alongside theirs we were mm-hmm. performing at the same venues like things like that so had i focused the way that those guys were able to focus um I might be in a different place today. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm, I love where I'm at. Yeah. Here with You're you. You're in a good spot. Yeah. So we wouldn't have met. Yeah. We wouldn't have met. Yeah. So that's what happened in Connecticut. And then I uh, ended up moving back to New York again. Okay. When did you move out to Scottsdale? Three years ago. Um, December of 2016. Was it, how many people? You knew Yardley out here, obviously. Yeah. Who else? I knew Yardley um, and then people that I met through Yardley. So in 2016, that was the year that my life changed. Um, and I say that because that was the year that I, I woke up. And what I mean by that is like for a, a, a major portion of the early years of, of my life, you know, zero to 25, mm-hmm. I was kind of asleep. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I, excuse me, really got punched in the throat by life mm-hmm. that I I like woke up and began to understand things. But I got to the point where I was frustrated so much with where I wasn't getting in life Mm -hmm. and where inherently I wanted to be intrinsically I I knew that there was something that and someone that I wanted to be and I wasn't that person so I got frustrated to the point that it bred action and I started to do things that I normally was not doing like reading a book right I, you know I, I finally read a book i um decided to to go vegan and these were all things that i did because they were so far from the person that i was and i needed to get away from who i was in order to be who i am today uh so yeah i ended up moving out here in december of 2016 because that year i did something called my 100 days I've heard of that. Simply, um, I don't know if you have heard of that. I mean, there's 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 different a hundred days different things out it. there. Yeah, yeah, but um, it was inspired by um, a, a period in history called the Hundred Days, where Napoleon was exiled from France. Within a hundred days, he came back and and was the was the leader. There's the, the movie Count of Monte Cristo kind of tells that story. And it was, you know, 100 days is about uh, adopting that mentality where it's like, I'm going to bounce back. So anyways, I do my own 100 days where it's like every day for 100 days, I have to do one thing that I've never done before, whether it be listen to an album, listen to a podcast, read a book, travel somewhere in a city that I've never been. Just one little thing. It could be read a a, a little excerpt. It's one thing. You know what I mean? Right with a different color pen. Like, I don't know. One thing. And if I did it, on that day, if I did one thing that I'd never done before, I would green check mark. If I didn't, red X. X. And what I noticed during that 100 days is that any time that I did something brand new, which I consider to be a productive day, my next day, most of the time, was also productive. Any time that I did not, the next day was most likely not productive. Not productive. And right. so I learned like the lesson behind what momentum actually is. And so uh, during that time, during 100 days, I kept using traveling to Arizona as like a reason to do something new. Like I've never done this. You know, I ended up hiking Camelback during one of my visits. But I visited Arizona, I think, seven times in 2016. And I fell in love with the place. And that's what led to the move here at at the end of December, um, which was also random. I got fired from my job on a Friday. I called Yardley and I was like, hey, you remember how we joked about what if I just stayed last Mm -hmm. time that we were there? It's happening. It's happening. I'm I'm, (laughs) I'm coming back. And literally I took, I had a $450 paycheck from my job, uh, spent like 200 on a flight and came out here with a hundred dollars because my dad asked me to borrow a hundred dollars the night i left <laughs> <laughs> that's all right yeah yeah so i came out here with a hundred dollars to my name slept on yarley's couch for about two months before i got on my feet and um started working my way to where we are now that's awesome man i mean that's i think especially if you're going to new city that's the way to do it because i moved out here from north dakota i only knew one guy i knew a few guys where'd you move out here from north dakota that's north dakota, where i'm okay. from true, so true, I, true. I grew up out there and then i went and played college football a place called dickinson state mm-hmm. which is a four-year and that's why i, I really liked your basketball story because i was the same way mm-hmm. so i was a medical red shirt i had shoulder surgery so i just didn't get to play didn't get to do anything then the next year um the first three weeks i didn't make the travel team and i was 
like to say I was pissed off to say I was just that was my first throw punch because I was the same like in high school yeah you know top dog now I go to college I'm shit dude I'm not even a dog I'm like the, the peasant outside like yeah. they don't even acknowledge me so yeah. I'm like fuck I didn't make the travel team like is this even worth it I was starting to question stuff and I'm like no it's time to bear down so that later on that year I think our sixth or seventh game we were flying out to Oregon for a game and it was a big deal because we we're going to get to fly we we're going to get to do big things and I'm like you know what if I just bear down and I work hard enough maybe I'll make it and I'll get to go on the Oregon trip mm-hmm finally dude week six it was like out of the rudy movie like me and my roommates when i went down the line i made it so i got to go on the travel team and that's that's so good to learn that like that's where you and i were similar to learn a lesson like that early in life to where you get punched in the throat you got to come back because guess what post college those punches in the throat are just going to become harder tougher and not as easy to overcome it's not just sometimes it isn't just hard work it's like putting yourself in different situations yeah and i'm sure with music you know just as comedy and you know everyday life it's the same um now when you talk when i say that like do you have an inner circle of people that you can fall back on like are those tough times that now that you've kind of adapted to or what's the what's when you the, what do you mean by like that that inner circle that i can fall back on well i mean i see you on instagram live and you obviously like when I mean fall back on, do you be like, I'm going to go right and then I'm going to go to the studio? Do you like, when I say inner circle, I mean like, do you have a process that you want to make sure so you don't go down the wrong path and fall back in that bad times? Or what do you go about when you... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I am the process. Right. So that's what my life over the, I'd say the past year or two has been. I strongly believe in getting to a state where you are the energy that you want from the universe like it's you yeah you know and so because of that just to give you an example of what i mean there's like this uh, assessment online where it tells you what your flow profile is and the flow profile is pretty much just like um it lets you know when you're in your flow state Oh, really? Okay. Um, Flow state meaning like you lock in, you are super productive for hours, won't even notice, you know, time is passing. And my flow profile is called flow goer. Flow goer. A flow goer, rather than seeking to go in and out of it and like tap into the flow state, a flow goer seeks to have an eternal state of flow. So like, you know, my goal in life is to just be you know, the, the inner circle, the process that you're talking about. So today, you know, I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm better than I've ever been. Mm-hmm. I am more at peace than I've ever been. And there's like a, a stage that I reached where if I have a low point, right, I don't go down below that stage anymore maybe i'm the stage right i've, I've like yeah. set the bar like i am the bar right and i know for a lot of people in life right it, you know bef- so for some people that bar doesn't exist yet so they when they go low that you know you can go all the way to rock bottom right i don't i don't fear that or have concern about that anymore because i've i've built myself up in such a way that i am bulletproof and very uh, resistant against those type of, of, of low energy forces. I hope if what I'm saying is, Oh, is it's great. Like no, it's, through. it's making a hundred percent. But okay. the one thing that, that I guess when you said you always want to be in the flow, I find it, you know, because when I turn it on, I try to turn it on. When I try to be funny, I try to be funny. When I try mm-hmm. to be serious, I find that if you try to do that all the time, you're going to burn out. Mm-hmm. So what have you found when you know push comes to shove with that what do you do do you just continue to push forward or what do you so because you got to have a few moments where you're like okay i gotta sit back and look and and meditate and just realize what i'm doing where i want to go so it's it's unique to the individual right so like what works for me it may or may not work for you like i'm i'm still learning you know and I, i would never suggest like um i would never instruct someone to do exactly you know what i'm doing but what i will say is there was a point in time where I would burn out. Yeah. And what I found was that the burnout happens when your self-care isn't in direct proportion to who you are as a person and who you want to be and, you know, w- what you're trying to exuberate, what you're, you know, what you're trying to be in the world. And so 
I just made a, a slight tweak in, you know, my process, which again, I've become my process. So now I don't think, I don't think of it as a process anymore, but like I prioritize my self care. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. I prioritize it so much that it's become who I am. I am the kind of person who cares about self now first so that I may be able to contribute to others, give to the world in whatever capacity that I need to at any given time. And it started with affirmations, which I'm, I know you've probably heard me talk about before because it's, oh, yeah. it's so... Uh, well, yeah, tell the people that are listening. God they, damn some it, Some people man. might not know. <sighs> okay, long... Uh, I'll make it short. I'll make okay. it short, okay? You're affirmations, right? It's, can, can you tell me what... what what um what are affirmations what do you what do you think they are what do you know you know to be true about affirmations affirmations are just kind of when you decide to change or which way to go about changing Mm -hmm. i mean everybody has different ways Mm -hmm. but i mean in yoga they talk about affirmations being like you come in sometimes feeling stressed but you can still leave feeling good but there's a there's a a, the middle part the tough part the affirmation part getting through that part and how to decide which part you want to become word is that kind of yeah yeah i've never heard it explained in that way but that doesn't that doesn't make it wrong that's actually interesting you're talking about the energy shift that happens um during and because of affirmations right so affirmations are essentially the simplest way to put it it's anything that you repeat to yourself over and over and over again yeah like a mantra yeah to the to the point that you now know it to be true okay so People think, though, they think affirmations, they, they think that they automatically have a positive um, connotation to them, and that's, that's not the truth. No? Uh, like I said, an affirmation is anything that you repeat to yourself over and over again mm. until you know it to be true. Mm-hmm. This whole COVID-19 thing sucks. Oof. Yeah. And if you say it sucks, There's it your suck. affirmation. There's your affirmation. Right? It's, it, the law of attraction in its most simple, simple form is whatever you look for, you will find. Okay? If, wow. If you Google, um, if you Google, I don't know, like negative... <laughs> uh, negative effects of eating broccoli, right? What are you going to find? The negative the effects. Negative effects even, yeah. If you, if you find you Google, some guy barfing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. If you Google positive effects of eating broccoli, what are you going to find? Yeah. Po- that's, you know, that's the simplest form of, level of, of law of attraction. Now, affirmations, however, the reason why they're so important, and like I said, they're not automatically positive. Like it could be my job sucks, Things are hard right now. I don't know what to do. I'm not a morning person. Whatever you're repeating to yourself, that's your affirmation. And now what happens is it forms not just what you think, but who you are, right? So if you say I'm not a morning person, you're also probably the kind of person that has eight or nine alarms on your phone, right? Right? Because you've told yourself. So now you've told yourself something, your mind believes it, knows it to be true. So now your actions reflect that, right? You create nine alarms and now you're the kind of person who wakes up late pretty much or later oh, than, they, than they want to. Now your life is now a reflection of what you created, okay? So... By default, and this is not true for everyone, but for, for most people, because of the way the world works and like the, the negative side of humanity, by default, our minds typically shift to a, a, a or are more attracted to a, a more negative vibration. OK, and so, um, you know, the first thing that goes through your mind when you wake up is like, oh, I'm tired. I want to go back to sleep. Right. By default. Like you don't have to like think about that so the reason why affirmations are important is because you have to override your default nature which can for the most part just be kind of lazy and and one way and not really like holistic and appreciative and grateful you know what i mean so affirmations what you need to turn them into are are things that you say to yourself over and over again but they're intentional And I mean over and over and over again. And the reason why it has to be over and over again is because eventually your mind's going to pick it up, right? Your subconscious is going to pick it up and know it to be true. Now, when you know something to be true, you become that. Your actions reflect that. So, you know, going back to your question about, you know, my inner circle and that process, I've become 
the oh, things okay. that I know to be true by repeating things over and over and over again to myself. So now it's like, you know, when a, a problem hits me, I don't even call it a problem. I don't even like, you know, for, for a lot of the people around me, um, they need a moment to kind of sit in the problem and like kind of digest it. And by the time they've digested it, I've already gotten to the solution. I've already thought about what I'm going to do to respond, to bounce back, to be better. And that's who I am now. I don't, you know, I, I no longer, I no longer think about that. So as I said, affirmations, I think are the most important thing. And, and there's proof behind it, you know, for anybody who doesn't believe and, you know, who's listening, just look at advertisements advertisement it's a it's a code word it's a it's a secret cover-up for affirmation right okay because if i say nationwide you know to say is on your side yeah. if aflac. i say aflac <laughs> yeah. right ba -da -ba -ba -ba, i'm right. loving it we know automatically right so now when you're in the checkout lane at Walgreens, why is there a Coke machine right there by the checkout or like bubble gum? Because you've seen it over and over again. So now you don't think your mind just knows it to be true. Bubble gum is good. Yep. I need this. Coke tastes good. Blah, blah, blah. You grab it and you go. Yeah. And and advertising is literally how I don't I don't want to say the world, but definitely here in the US, that's that's how how it works. And it's like a driving force of, of money. Well, how do you want to advertise yourself? You know, it's it's, you know, one thing that I really like Karen Feldman. She always says she always says everybody's mantra when they wake up should be i am powerful you should start your day by saying something similar to that or, or i am you know caring i am you know trying to determine i am something it should be i am something it shouldn't be you know today's gonna be shitty i got three meetings and then i gotta go to two open mics that i'm probably gonna bomb actually no i get the opportunity <laughs> yeah to have a good job i get the opportunity to go to two mics but you know i get i think the affirmation thing you're onto something there i think that's yeah. that's a good way to look at life and i think that's you know also so, like you said, COVID, what we're going through right now is this is a time when people need to hear this. This is a time when everybody's looking at each other like, what do we do? Mm -hmm. This is a, literally a time, Tariq, that no one, not even our parents, you know, grandparents, nobody has seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a different disease. It's a crazy thing. But what you just said could possibly change the way someone looks at something. Oh, it's not possibly. It will. It will. It will, it will change just by Dude, you saying a DNA. sentence, yeah. Just by saying a sentence to yourself every day, mm -hmm. continuously, you'll you'll be okay. Yeah, and it can be for any area of your life, like anything, right? If you get like nervous or you get anxiety, mm -hmm. um, if you, like, dude, it can be anything. If you repeat it to yourself over and over and over again, not only do you eventually know it to be true, but you start to attract more of it. Mm -hmm. So that's why when it's like a negative vibration, like my job sucks, right? Or I think my my girl is cheating on me, you start picking up signs. Like right <laughs> yeah. it, it comes to oh, you. Yeah. It you 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 literally manifest it. Mm -hmm. So it's not a possibility like this it will change your life and your life will be a reflection. You, scratch that your life is a reflection of what you tell yourself constantly yeah Un unfortunately for me a few times i've i've picked up the girlfriend she and she was no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> just kidding but uh no man that's that's thanks for sharing that i really appreciate that i, yeah. I want to talk about this book you have with you what what's going on with this little book oh this yeah what is that this is this is just my journal that's just okay my journal. and you yeah. bring it everywhere um not all the time but it's something that I'm trying to be better about. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get into it. And um, yeah, I want to just start documenting more of my day-to-day -day experiences because as my eyes have opened up to the magic of life and what the universe has to offer, I'm constantly experiencing things that are kind of difficult to describe. Okay. And things that I just want to remember. Yeah. And so I was, you know, I, I listened to a, an amazing podcast earlier on, on COVID and, and learned so much. Ooh, what was it? Um, Do you remember? Yeah. So it's a podcast that I listen to almost daily. It's called Mind Valley. It's run by a guy named Vishen Lakani. Um, okay. Amazing story. But he had uh, Jim, or I forgot the guy's name already. That's all right. I think it's, I think it's no, it's Tom Chi. He's a guy that used to work at Google. I, th I, th I think he still does um, partially work with at Google on some like pretty big pro projects. But he invented he invented um, Google Glass, 
Oh, you know, the, the yeah. glasses, yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, he talked about a lot of things, specifically in regards to COVID. He talked about something called uh, our amygdala response. And it's like oh, a big word. Yeah, yeah, big word. It pretty much has to do with our brains. And like what the amygdala, amygdala response does is it shuts down our higher reasoning. So anytime that fear is induced upon us, we have an amygdala response. So essentially that means we don't think as clearly as we normally would. This is the same thing that happens when you're under stress, anxiety, things like that. And once your higher reasoning you know, shuts down, you start to make low vibration choices and decisions. It's like, you know how when you watch a scary movie and you're like, why are you doing that? Don't go towards the, but it, well, yeah. it's, it's happening because the person's scared. So they're not thinking as clearly as you are behind your TV screen where you're safe and the ghost isn't about to kill you. Right. Um, but yeah, in real life, you know what that looks like when we get scared, stressed or have anxiety, we do stupid things right we turn to our vices which may or may not be extremely unhealthy and Mm -hmm. detrimental to our success or we turn into followers right where we're not even like the the person pushing the agenda um or or like really receiving the agenda we're just kind of like in the middle and we're just watching right watching the news right Mm -hmm. we're you're just watching this thing and again it's an amygdala response right so that your your higher reasoning is shut down you know that the news isn't necessarily like the best thing to watch but for some reason you're just addicted to it and you just watch it and oh, it's a I bunch know. of nonsense bs it's nonsense you know what i mean yeah so um you know he he touched on things like that but overall he made me feel um a lot better about the future of the world because it was just a subtle reminder and an affirmation from the universe that we are so blessed to be able to filter filter in and out the things that we consume. And so I'm listening to guys like, you know, Tom Chi and Tom he, Chi. That's such a cool name. Such Tom a, Chi. Such a cool name, What's your name? right? <laughs> My name is Tom Chi. <laughs> yeah. And I'm here to tell you how to manifest your destinations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's but a cool this, name. You know, this guy is great because he, he has like the, the spiritual understanding of like, you know, Yoda, but he's a scientist wow. and, an, and an engineer. How'd you uh, find him? I, today was the first day I oh, ever shit. heard of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, through the, through this podcast. But, you know, again, it was just a subtle reminder that I get to choose what I listen to there in this time. And what okay, I listen to on. today, rather than inducing fear in, upon me, it, it induced empowerment and gave me a guiding light as to things that I can continue to do. Man, I, you, you nailed it there a few sentences ago because I've, I've interviewed some fairly successful people on this podcast. And, and one thing they're always telling me, and I've got to work on this as well because it contributes to anxiety. But they, you know, you said you you can be a follower. Um, you can like turn to vices that you know will you know either make or you or break you sometimes. Mm-hmm. And um, they have all said that. You know, Caleb Hawk. I had him on today. He or not today, but a few weeks back. He owns Glory Games. Guy has never drank in his life. Wow. And I mean, I've had, um, you know, the girl that the lady that owns hot yoga university, she said the same stuff. She meditates to push that stuff away. Yeah. Now I have you on, you know, fairly, you know, productive musician who's making his way up very quickly. You say the same shit. So there's a big thing here mm-hmm. that seems to be working that I think a lot of people could take out of this podcast. And I mean, I'm, I'm guilty. I, you know, I'd still party you, you know, we partied together and stuff, but as long as you can find a little bit of a balance, you know, you can, I'm not saying don't go have fun and just be very strict, but if you find that balance that works for you and have, you know, some determination, some grit, some backbone to say no, you know, sometimes, cause I'm, I'm pretty guilty about that Tariq. I'm pretty, if somebody's like, Hey, let's go out to eat. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. You know, and I should be like, no, man, I, I got to sit down. I got to write. I need to watch, you know, some stand up. I need to get something going or like, you know, just simple stuff like that. Yeah. That, that at, over time does pile up and you know before you know it, it's a problem yeah yeah absolutely i would um i personally have made the shift from u- the use of the word balance to the use of the word harmony oh. and simply why is because balance implies that things are separate from one another and in like a physical and literal sense, like sure, things might be separate, you know, like l- literally party is partying is not the same thing as staying home and reading a book or working on your podcast, you know, wh- yeah. whatever it is that you might be doing. But harmony 
it implies unison and oneness. And the reason why I love it is because we are each one, yeah. right? You're one, I'm one. And so whatever decision I do, that's just what I'm doing. But it's still me doing it. It's me partying or it's me staying home and doing this. So I've stopped seeking balance in my life because as humans, it would be, I would say, literally impossible to balance everything that we do. It's if you think about like a job, your dreams, your goals, your fitness, your relationship, your spirituality. You can't do it, yeah. Imagine trying to literally balance, like, you know, but no. can you harmonize them? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a lot more, a lot more, it's, it's viable, just, a lot yeah, more viable, possible, yeah. empowering, you know, yeah. all the above. No, I, I, yeah, that's, that's a good way to put it. I mean, and you can do things that will, you know, help you harmonize stuff. Like one thing I love to do is, is yoga. I mean, that's mm -hmm. definitely something I, I like to just think of it as an hour of me. Yes. My time. Because I, throughout my day, I've got so many, you know, whether it's social media, buddy calling, you know, my day job, you know, just, I, you know, you can get lost in the industry yeah. that you're in and we're in the entertainment district together, inter industry, excuse me, together, that you can get lost and you can lose yourself. And when you lose yourself, like you said earlier, you have no flow. You have Dude, no that, nothing. That right there is the scariest thing in the world to me. Oh, yeah. I'm more scared of... I was just telling my, my girlfriend this um, yesterday and one of my friends, I fear, I don't fear COVID-19, uh, physical diseases and viruses and even like, like dying, yeah. right? Not physically at least. What I fear is, is dying spiritually and losing myself, as you just said. That's my, to me, that is like the ultimate <laughs> ko oh dude yeah you know? you're done once that hits you yeah you're you might as well be physically dead at that point it's not yeah and it, it's <laughs> I, i'm gonna guess you're you're something like me you and and i want you to take this the the most you know light way you can but if you down the road 20 years are working in a day job that you don't really like you're kind of looking back in your life. You're thinking, maybe I could have went this route. Maybe you're going to feel regret. You're going to feel out of balance. You're going to feel out of place. Is that not somewhat spot on? Yeah. And that fuel, that that's scared stuff, the emotion that brings up that feeling to me, fuels me to work hard today mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm not in that situation, you know, 20 years down the road or whatever. You know, I don't like to think that further, but sometimes that helps me. Yeah. I don't know about you, like, because there's some nights when I get home from work and I'm just like, no, I'm going to stay home and just, you know, turn on the PlayStation. Let's just go to work. Let's eat and go to bed. But then I think like, shit, man, the guy 20 years down the road yourself is going to look back at this night and be like, hey, you could have went to the open mic and you could have met the person who runs a Tempe Improv. Then you could have got up and opened for Chris D'Elia two weeks later. Yeah. And that could have changed the whole way your life is portrayed. One night. 100%. That's what scares me. Like not co I'm you know COVID's scary. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. that yeah. shit like that, those little mis those mistakes that you make and you might not even know you're making, scares the shit out of me, man. That's where it's at, man. That's where it's at. You know, a lot of people think that they're facing resistance in life, mm -hmm. and it's the most dangerous form of resistance is self. Wow. Yeah. No. And that's, I, I agree. Like, like you said, that's that's when it's scary because you don't even realize your own worst enemy you don't even realize right you blame your job for being shitty and sucking and you 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 know you blame the people around you you blame your environment you blame you know like not having enough money you you blame not having enough opportunity you blame the government right you're looking externally yeah and one of the the most tragic things that I see on a day-to-day -day basis are people who live their entire lives looking externally and never, never, not once, just like take a look inside. Yeah. Oh, no, that's spot on, man. That's you know? that's exactly the way I feel. I, man, whew, what a few... Uh, what a few po I appreciate you coming in today dude that was awesome I, I I wanted to one thing I really want to know personally and I know a lot of our friends want to know where, where what's going to happen with Tariq in the future man what's what's some goals you want to accomplish here moving forward true so currently what I'm working on I'd say my life falls into to four buckets really um, 
there's music which mm-hmm. uh, you know i don't see going away anytime soon I, I make it because it's like a it's like a feeling you know i have this one of the ways that i go about expressing myself i have a charity foundation called infinite collective foundation and that's infinite collective in case anybody wants to look that mm-hmm. up yep, okay infinite collective it's in, in in my bio on instagram and um infinite collective foundation the mission is essentially to cultivate environments where people can discover their highest self and what i mean by that is i come from a place where i i realized that your environment can play a great great role in the person that you become who you think you have become and what you think you're capable of yeah right so just you know simple to keep it short if a kid grows up in a home being told what they can't do all the time then they're going to grow up and be very their consciousness is going to be oriented around um things that they're not capable of okay as opposed to someone who's growing up in a home and being told things that they can do constantly so i'll be building schools uh, my first school is actually going to be i'm the way things are moving right now and with you know everything i'm working on i i want to say i'll be building my first school within the next 12 months and i i'm saying school because that's like the socially acceptable and easily acknowledgeable term but they're really uh sanctuaries because one of my goals is to reinvent the education system that's Mm -hmm. one of my decade goals reinvent the education system provide a safe saving a safe haven for children all around the world and water the 100 years that follow our own and what i mean by that is like invest in the children because for some reason we live life in such a way that we think that our time here like we live it as though our time here is it you know and like there's nothing after us um so yeah i'll be i'll be building schools i I have a goal to have 500 schools slash sanctuaries in over 30 countries wow man um I'll be doing music, of course. I have my brand, Infinite Infinite Co., uh, which is separate from the foundation, but also, you know, it harmonizes yeah. the same, yeah. but it's essentially like the Nike of personal development. So, so more, you have like hats and shirts? and Yeah, there'll okay. be merch, hats, shirts, um, the book. Um, there'll be conferences, podcasts, things that are all centered around conversations like the one that we had today, where it's really just a focus on bringing out the infinite possibilities within. Yeah. And then uh, real estate, that's, uh, that's, oh, that's my yeah. cash cow. Okay. Yeah, so ownership and apartment buildings and eventually skyscrapers as well. So you don't have, like for me, eventually I want to move out to LA, mm-hmm. eventually. Well, we'll see. With everything going on, we'll see about that. But do you have any, like, that's what I was kind of getting at. Are you, like, planning on, like, moving out of, or are you planning on staying in Arizona? Or do you feel you see yourself yeah. going to LA eventually or, I'll, like, back I'll to New here. York? I'll be here for a while. Um, me and my girlfriend have this this thing, this saying where it's like we can do anything for one year. So yeah. uh, one of my my goals for a while, I'd say for the past ten years at least, since I've been doing music and also growing up being a a, a Laker fan, even though I was a Nick fan. Yeah. Um, but Oof. I was I was really a Laker fan. Yeah. Um, has been a move to L.A. And so me and my girlfriend, we, you know, we've said like you know maybe we do it for a year. Maybe I move back to New York for a year. I can right. do anything for a year. It's one year, you know what I mean? Um, So it's definitely possible, but this is definitely home base. And this is where the headquarter of my foundation will be. That's cool, man. I I like this. And man, you covered a lot of great topics today, dude. We didn't even, we didn't even get to the school thing. I didn't know that was a part. (laughs) That's something I really want to cover because I'm into that too. Yeah. Um, Well, not building schools, but I have a foundation back home that does like scholarships for a basketball program we do this basketball tournament to like help kids get scholarships they're graduating it's just a fun that is time. awesome yeah it's it's we can talk about it later but yeah so we're running out of time unfortunately but dude thank you so much for coming in and thank I, you i ask every guest that does swim lessons to leave leave us with something leave us with something that you'd like to you know the every conversation you have daily that you try to sum up with and summarize your time here so far on planet earth like what you would want people to live by okay The average person goes through life only knowing two versions of themselves, the worst and the mediocre. Very rarely do people tap into their full potential, their best, their most infinite. And the secret, the caveat behind that is you'll never know your full potential. So 
rather than spend your life looking externally at all the things going around and the, the things going on, you know, even like your relationship, your job, your, your dream, like all of those things are going to be an extension of self. So the one thing that I would have people take from this is to just focus on you and i mean really take a deep dive in if you work eight hours a day at a job then you should at least be giving yourself eight hours a day of self-exploration in whatever way that you know that 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 might present itself to you and if you don't again you'll be one of the people who go through life only knowing the worst version of themselves and the mediocre but never discovering the full potential damn what a drop the mic that was awesome (laughs) thank you so much for coming in Thank Can't you. wait to see where you go from here on out. And, dude, uh, dude if you're down, we got to get you back in here. We got a lot more to cover. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank, Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. I told you it's gonna be a party.